Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now, if you're anything like me, you use a bunch of battery powered tea lights in your haunt to light the insides of your foam jack-o-lanterns. And if you're really anything like me, you've forgotten to turn them off at the end of the night, resulting in a bunch of dead tea lights. Well, I finally reached my breaking point this year, and I'm going to solve this problem once and for all by wiring up our jack-o-lanterns to work on our 12 volt lighting system. So let's get to it. Before I get into the build, let's take a look at everything we'll need to handle the conversion, starting with these 12 volt Eagle Eye LED bulbs. And since I want them to work on my 12 volt setup, I'll need a male RCA jack to plug them in with, along with some mounting hardware, a half inch electrical box adapter, and lastly, this four inch round plastic cover. This cover, unfortunately, has some weather stripping on the back, but was the cheapest option. So I'll need to remove it before I can proceed with the assembly. Now that I've got a blank canvas to work on, let's start with the build. Because I want the pumpkins to sit flat, I'll need to run the cord out of the back, but that also means I'll need to create a notch on this fitting for it to pass through. So I grabbed my rotary tool and a small sanding drum and got to making a notch. And after a little bit of cleanup, I can set it aside and move on to the LED assembly. These Eagle Eye bulbs are waterproof, but are a bit too tall for the adapter. So I'll add on this washer and a second nut, which will allow me to adjust the height of the bulb within the adapter and prevent the cord from getting kinked as it makes its way through the notch in the back. Now that I know the height works, I can apply some CA glue to the top of the adapter and glue the pieces together. The next part of the build is to create a platform for our light to get mounted to. This also gives me a surface for gluing it to my pumpkins. And once again, I grab my CA glue and this time we'll apply it to the bottom of the adapter and we'll center it on the four inch cover plate. And just like that, we've got our finished light assembly. It's essentially the same type of plate you'd find in the store-bought pumpkins, but now you can use it with your own custom jack-o'-lanterns or any other prop that is internally lit. And speaking of custom jack-o'-lanterns, here's one of ours that's seen better days, but still finds its way into our haunt every year. And because of that, It'll need a small hole drilled into the lower back so that I can pass through the LED cord and still have it sit flat. So I flipped it over and found a drill bit that's slightly larger than the cord and got to drilling. Before I permanently install the light, I'm going to black it out so that it's less noticeable once it's in place. So I masked off the bulb with some painter's tape and got down to spray painting it and then set it aside to dry. While I waited, I figured it would be good form to hide the bulb with a fake candle cover. So I grabbed some 2 inch ABS pipe and added some hot glue drips. I have a video dedicated to making fake candles and I'll leave a link to it in the video description if you want to make some for yourself. Since the likelihood of these candles being seen from the back is pretty slim, I just added drips to the front half and then a bead of glue along the top to finish it off. After some glue cool down, and a bit of white spray paint, I was able to then glue the tiny candle to the platform with some more CA glue. And now I can shift my attention to the wiring portion of this build. The first thing to do is thread the cord through the back of the pumpkin. And once that's done, I can disassemble the RCA jack and thread the cover onto the LED cord. With that out of the way, it's time to solder my wires. I'll apply solder to the terminals and the wires, although these wires came pre-soldered. And then I can join the two by applying the soldering iron to the terminal, which will reheat the solder and bond the two parts together as it rapidly cools. The red wire to the short terminal and the black wire to the long terminal. I'll repeat this step for the other wire and then I can screw the cover back into place, test my connections to make sure that the light works and move on to installation.
The last thing to do on this build is to permanently install the light. So I mixed up some 5 minute epoxy and applied it to the cover plate, and then set the plate into position in the opening of my jack-o-lantern. I found out later that CA glue would have also worked for this step, plus the bond is a lot quicker. And once the epoxy had cured, and everything was securely in place, it was time to plug it in. Once it's placed in our haunt, it'll be connected to a small flicker circuit to help give it a more candle-like glow. But for now, I just need to wait for sundown. Now there's a bunch of different applications for this technique, but for me, this one will be a real game changer. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>